Thank you for listening to the Gift Beats Vegas podcast. We got a good video here today. Preseason is all but over. We got one game left tonight. And this video is going to give me a really good chance to let you guys know my last minute thoughts on every team before the start of the regular season. I'm going to go through and tell you what teams I fear and what teams I don't. The only other note that I want you guys to take note of is September 3rd is going to be when I post a video for the Thursday night game, the first NFL game of the season, Chiefs-Lions. I'm going to come on here on the 3rd and give my pick and break the game down. And then the 8th, which is going to be that Friday, I'm going to come on and do all the rest of the picks for Sunday and then the Monday night game as well. So really looking forward to that. We only got, what, less than a couple of weeks, and those videos are going to be up. It's going to be awesome. So with that, let's get into this video here, starting with the AFC East, and we'll just go right through, and I'll let you guys know. So the Buffalo Bills, absolutely I fear them for one reason as of right now, Josh Allen. He's unbelievable, guys. You know it. I know it. doesn't matter how many people hate on him, call him a choke artist, whatever. When he's on, when he's dominant, it's pretty hard to stop him between him picking up yards with his legs or throwing. And I'll tell you what, if the Bills are healthy, this is also what I'm going to fear about them. Possibly the run game. Now that this is way different, James Cook is another year in the league. We know he comes from good bloodlines, plus Latavius Murray and Damian Harris. I mean, that's not a joke. I mean, yeah, they're older running backs, but it's the best that the Bills have had in a long time, the best running back group. And they obviously have a pass game to complement that from what Josh Allen can do through the air. So I could be fearful, you know, in this coming season to be proved to be fearful of the Bills running game. And then on the defensive side, if Von Miller and Leonard Floyd are healthy out there, I think we'll come to fear them as well, too. We just have to, you know, see if they can stay on the field. Moving on now to the Miami Dolphins, there's one thing about the Miami Dolphins that I fear the most, and that's that receiving group. It's ridiculous. Jalen Waddell and Tyreek Hill. They got some good backups there as well, but the main line is, is that these guys, no matter who you put at quarterback, really can't be stopped. Like, let's say Tua gets a concussion, and that's it for him. If Mike White steps in there, I'm going to be a little bit scared. Hell, I mean, even if Skylar Thompson was in there, I would be a little bit scared because – you got receivers that can make anybody look good. Teddy Bridgewater, doesn't matter who you put in there. So that's just a note. These guys are so dynamic and so explosive. The Dolphins are going to be in a lot of games just because of that receiving core. The New England Patriots, I do not fear. I really don't. Their defense is all right if you're going to pick a strong point about that team. but And the coaching, obviously. But uh, the receiving group and the quarterback – situation really does not make me fearful of them like Matt Jones is at this point as far as I'm concerned a liability so you're going to be going into games against a really tough AFC in general and some really good defenses especially against the pass and Matt Jones is going to be fluttering balls out there weaker than Phillip Rivers it's not going to be good for that reason alone that gives any team that plays them a chance to win realistically I don't even care if the Patriots are playing the Rams. I mean, yeah, I mean, I would pick the Patriots to win the game, but still, Matt Jones is such a liability as far as I know right now. He could give that game away. The New York Jets are up next. And look, I mean, I hold no love for the Jets and their fans to a certain extent. I'm sorry. I mean, I try to remain unbiased. I really try to be the best you know, podcaster I can be and give a clear shot, but the fans disgust me with the New York Jets, but I'm going to be honest with you guys. I do not fear the Jets offense like some people do. I know their running back group is stacked, but you can only have one running back or two on the field anyway. And Rogers had Aaron Jones in Green Bay. So it's not like he didn't have a run game there. And we've seen Rogers with only one good receiver, what he can do. It's not that impressive. So with the Jets, I mean, outside of Garrett Wilson, who else is going to really step up at receiver? And if teams don't respect the pass, then what's going to happen? It's going to be easier to stop the run, and this Jets offense isn't going to be that scary. But I'll, like I said, I'm going to be a straight shooter. The defense for the Jets does scare me because it's deep, because they got playmakers on every level, because they can stop the run and physically hurt you up front before it even gets to a point where a quarterback has three seconds in the pocket to throw the ball. That's why I fear the Jets. Sauce Gardner, 
the players on the D line, they're very good. I'll give them that. But I'm telling you, I feel like this Jets offense could be a little bit of a letdown. Like I said, I mean, what are we supposed to base this on? You guys follow my comment section. I said, I mean, the Giants didn't even play their starters in this past preseason game. Their second and third string was on the field. So Rodgers got to go out there and basically just have a warm-up game. They allowed him that. But if I was the Giants, I would have went out there for blood that game. I would have made a statement. But they decided to lay down, and it is what it is. I don't really take much from what Rodgers did by throwing that touchdown to Garrett Wilson. I mean, it's if it was against the first string of a team like the Steelers that were trying, then it would make I would feel a little bit better about it. But right now, we have nothing to go on. As far as I'm concerned, they got a 38-year-old quarterback that has – injury concerns that has slowed down. We saw it last year. And this is the, basically the Jets are dealing with the same situation Green Bay was at last year, except they got Garrett Wilson. I don't really see the difference except for that. Moving on now to the AFC North, the Baltimore Ravens. This was a team that actually had nothing to prove to me. Um, I know Marlon Humphrey's a little bit banged up on the defensive side but they brought in Ronald Darby. As far as I know, he'll fill the gap until Humphrey can come back. But that's really the only issue that I saw. They brought in Jadavion Clowney, which is amazing. I think he could have that kind of a role like Adamica Sue had for the Patriots a couple of years ago when they went to the Super Bowl and won. You know, you play 1,100 or whatever some odd snaps per season. Adamica Sue was in the 700 snap range. I think if they do that with Clowney, he could be very, very effective, and I think we would see more explosion. We would see him getting to the quarterback more. Let's not make him a full-time starter. Let's be smart about that. I think the Ravens will be. Hell of a linebacking core, hell of a defensive line rotation, and offensively, they're looking really scary, providing everyone's healthy. Um, obviously, Odell being in there, Zay Flowers looking good at camp. Bateman is a number three. With his route running, wouldn't be so bad. Mark Andrews. Good offensive line, good run game, Lamar. And I'll tell you, I fear both sides of the Ravens. I fear their defense, and I fear the explosion from Lamar and now the weapons that they have to complement that. You don't know, no one's going to know what they're going to do. And I'll be honest, when we're talking about a top five team in the NFL that scares me and it takes a lot to scare me, it's the Ravens. Whenever the Buffalo Bills, are, well, that's my team, but whenever I see the Ravens, I always hold my breath when Lamar drops back because he's so explosive in so many different ways. And he actually made a lot of good throws with really no one to throw the football to outside of Mark Andrews. Now he has that supporting cast. If they're healthy, the Ravens are going to be a top five team easily, maybe even higher. Next up the Bengals. So what I fear from the Bengals is their offense. When Joe Burrow's out there with those three stud receivers, well, I mean, T Higgins and, Jamar Chase are amazing. And then obviously the rest, you know, like Tyler Boyd, that's just a compliment to that. But the two beasts at receiver Higgins and Chase with Joe Burrow, with how good that O line is going to look this year with that run game with Mixon, I fear the hell out of that. Because, I mean, if they get the run game going a little bit, if you got the defense off balance just a little bit, they're going to just completely and utterly embarrass you. And the defense up until now, I feared it. I don't know how that's going to look without their safeties. That's something that we got to pay attention to. But I'll tell you what, that defensive line rotation is looking pretty good still. Um, again, I'm not fearful of it, like scared, but it is pretty damn good still. Moving on now to the Cleveland Browns. As of right now, I don't fear the Cleveland Browns because as far as I know, if you stop the run, you beat them. And it's not like their defense has been overly great. I would say the only thing that could change is if Deshaun Watson ends up becoming what he used to be. And then I would be fearful because then you'd have Nick Chubb running the rock. You'd have Deshaun Watson running and throwing, you know, that would be scary. But as of right now, I got to see it to believe it. There were a couple flashes this past week in preseason with Deshaun Watson that I actually really liked. It was nice to see him be a little bit more confident with his mobility in the pocket to buy time. That was something last year in the season that quite frankly, I was waiting to see. And I just never did. I was like, Watson, why are you, why are you standing in the pocket so much, man? Do what made you special, you know, buy time, bounce out to the outside a little bit, then throw it down the field. Finally, for me, at least I saw the elite flash of that 
in this past preseason game on the touchdown pass. And then, of course, when he hit Amari Cooper as well. So that's really good to see. And I also wanted to touch on this while we're on the Cleveland Browns. I really don't believe that Watson deserves all the hate that he's getting when he walks out on the field. And I know he's going to get butchered this year. Whatever opposing team that he plays at on their field, he's going to hear it from the fans, probably from some of the players, people calling him a predator, all these things. He never raped anybody, guys. He never stalked anybody. All he did was pick out massage therapists that he liked, and then he went to them. And he did go a little bit far with the sexual advances, but it's not like he ever like beat up a woman or held them down and raped them. I mean, if he did that, he'd be in jail. So people saying predator and all this stuff, that don't even make sense, man. He never stalked anybody. So let's just ease up on the Deshaun Watson hate. But you know what? Doesn't matter what I say. Because when he goes into the Steelers, the Bengals, the Ravens, all these other teams, he's going to hear it. People, I mean, and he's got to shut that out. Maybe he's starting to. Maybe, the you know, this past preseason game, that flash we saw, maybe he's starting to just say, hey, I'm a multi-million dollar quarterback. These people are all just making 50 grand or less a year at most. You know, who the fuck are they to call me anything? If he can shut all that out and get his confidence back, the Browns are going to be serious. Next up, the Steelers. I do fear one thing from the Steelers. I fear TJ Watt. I do. And I think that's just going to trickulate throughout the entire team. You know, the fact that he can take over games on his own. The fact that he can blow up a game and destroy a quarterback. And that really allows the Steelers some wiggle room. And I think it allows them to be more aggressively on offense, which right now, you know, Kenny Pickett, this preseason, they look pretty good. There were a lot of good things we saw from him in the regular season last year. So it's not like I needed the Steelers to prove anything to me. I just wanted to see Kenny Pickett get a little bit better, and he did. He did just that. So they're going to be playing basically with a lot less pressure because T.J. Watt blows shit up. If T.J. Watt gets hurt, Steelers are still going to be a good team, but I'm not going to fear them like I fear them now. The AFC South is next. The Houston Texans, I don't fear anything at all about the Houston cream puff Texans can save my breath here and a little energy by just skipping over to another team that I'm not fearful of at all. And that's the Indianapolis Colts. Don't fear anything because they don't have a pass game. Don't have a pass game. Your run game is going to suffer. Even if you got Jonathan Taylor and your defense doesn't scare me one bit. So no, you're not very frightful. The Jacksonville Jaguars, they're going to be a good team, but I'm not afraid of them, guys. You know, Calvin Ridley is looking nasty. Looks like he's back to form. Uh, I'm pretty sure Trevor Lawrence is going to have a really good year. They're going to have a good run game. The offense is going to play really well. They're going to have a good speed rush on the defensive end. But as of right now, like if you're a juggernaut team or really any team in general, I feel like you could go play Jacksonville and feel like you at least have a chance, more than a puncher's chance. You know, like if you played the Ravens, you're probably thinking there's a good chance we're going to lose this game. With the Jags, I don't think that at all. The Tennessee Titans, no, there's absolutely nothing I fear about them. They don't have anything at the pass. You know, DeAndre Hopkins, I mean, he's going to be all right. Traylon Burks is already banged up. I mean, how how much is D-Hop going to do on his own if he's double covered? It's not like he's the fastest guy out there on the field. I know he's got a pretty good jump ball ratio. It's nasty, but... King Henry's getting older. This offensive line sucks. Tannehill can't run, even though I like Tannehill if everything's going well, but I don't think it will be going well. The defense isn't what it used to be. Simmons up front is nasty. I believe Landry, they still have him up front. I mean, that's cool, but it's just not a very deep team. I I don't fear them. AFC West is next. The Denver Broncos, there's absolutely nothing that I fear about the Denver Broncos. Russell Wilson has did nothing in the preseason to make me think that he could end up being a better quarterback this year, unfortunately for the Broncos. Plus all the injuries that they've had at the receiving group, all that's left is Cortland Sutton. And then I think, um, let me check real quick for you guys, because I really want to be accurate about this. Um, So Marvin Mims, that was their second round pick from this year. That's what I wanted to make sure of. He could potentially step up and be a very good receiver for them. But you guys know, even the best receivers take at least a couple of years to develop. Like, 
even Devonta Smith as great as he's going to be this year. You better draft him in your fantasy league. But it's still his first year was good, but it took him a while to get used to things. You know, obviously Traylon Burks was a rookie last year. Didn't really, well, wasn't that impressive. So as far as I'm concerned, all the Broncos have to throw the football to right now is Cortland Sutton and he's injury prone. And Russell Wilson has shit the bed this entire preseason. Uh, our, that first game against the Cardinals was just an embarrassment. And uh, because the Cardinals are one of the least deep teams in the NFL, like their second and third string suck ass. And it took Russell Wilson until the second quarter to throw a touchdown against those guys. It's not good. That's a telltale sign. And their pass rush, Baron Browning and Randy Gregory, if it's on the field, is great. I think it could be one of the best tandems in the league, but Randy Gregory is always in and out of the lineup. Baron Browning got hurt last year. This is flimsy. And I do, I mean, if you're playing the Broncos, you if you're any team, basically, you got a really good chance to win. I hate to say it though, guys, but like, even if the Arizona Cardinals played the Denver Broncos with the way they are now, with the way Russell is now, we like, let's just say they played week one. The Cardinals, it wouldn't surprise me if they covered a four- a four point spread or a six point spread and maybe even upset them. If Russell went out there and had two, three interceptions, just something to keep a note of guys. When we're looking at these games, it's, it's, I can't believe the Broncos let it get to this point. And I can't believe that Russell Wilson has gotten to this level, like how he fell off so much. And I, I've asked that question before, did he become too domesticated? You know, does he, would he rather be at home with his family? You, you got to wonder. You got to wonder about things like that because he's still like this last preseason game that we saw him in. He still has the mobility, the legs and everything. He has the athleticism, but did he lose the fire to compete? That's a good question. Next up, the Kansas City Chiefs. Hell yeah, I fear them. I fear Pat Mahomes. What do you want from me? Uh, it's not, I mean, Travis Kelsey's nasty. You know, Andy Reid is a great play caller, but bottom line is, is that Pat Mahomes moves. He reads the field. He knows he's like Peyton Manning in a way where he knows what the defense is doing before he even snaps the football uh, in the sense of his mentality. And then the rest of the things like his accuracy, the different ways he can throw the football, the different ways he can move. He is the best quarterback in the NFL. He is the number one ahead of Josh Allen. However you want to put it, that Pat Mahomes is up there. He can make anything work. He'll make anybody look good because he puts the ball on the open guy. And he reads the field so well, and it's just unbelievable. I mean, I, I know a lot of people kiss Mahomes' ass, but he earned it in my book. Unbelievable. The Las Vegas Raiders are up next. No, I don't fear anything about them. Nothing. As good as Josh Jacobs is, and that's a good thing that they were able to work that out with him, apparently. Um, but they got – one of the worst offensive lines in the league. Jimmy G is a statue outside of Devontae Adams. They have no one to throw the football to. They got rid of Dale and Darren Waller, even though he's injury prone because they're stupid. And Max Crosby's okay, I guess, up front. Belial Nichols, I mean, that's okay. But no, I'm not afraid of anything here. Nothing. Because if you stop Josh Jacobs, you win this game. That's the bottom line. It's very easy to beat the Raiders. I think they're going to be lucky if they get to five or six wins. I think that would be considered an overstatement for them. Next up, the Los Angeles Chargers. This is probably the toughest one out of any team. Like, do I fear anything about the Chargers? If they're healthy, which is a big if, yes, okay, I do. That receiving core is nasty. Kellen Moore is the OC. I think Justin Herbert's going to have his best year this season if everyone's on the field. They've added pieces to the O-line. Eckler's a great running back. Yes, I do fear their offense at this point if everything's going well, healthy. And defensively, yes, I do fear Joey Bosa and Khalil Mack. Again, if they can stay on the field. But yes, as of right now, I if you're a team playing the Chargers anywhere, they could take over games and just kick your ass right out of the stadium. They have that talent, that ability. Moving on now to the NFC East, the Cowboys. Yeah, I do fear the Cowboys. I fear Micah Parsons in that defense because they can blow you up and they can keep giving Dak chances and he'll need a lot at times. But 
he'll keep getting those chances. And the Cowboys got enough weapons at receiver now with Brandon Cooks and the rest. Uh, uh, C.D. Lamb, it's going to be nasty. Good offensive line, good run game. They have the offense to complement what a really good defense can do. And that's my standpoint. But if it was just Dak, like this offense alone with Dak at the helm, I don't fear it because Dak gives games away. Dak makes mistakes. Dak keeps teams in games against them. But that defense makes sure that it doesn't get out of hand. Next up, the New York Giants. I don't, their defense has gotten a lot better through the years up until now. But I don't fear it because their secondary to me is still not where it needs to be. Their offense, I don't particularly fear any player. Like Waller's nasty, I get that. Saquon running the football. But what I do fear is Brian Dable and his coaching. I'll be honest about that. If I'm think, It's a little bit naive of me to think that when I'm not overly afraid of the Giants' pieces on the field. But Brian Dable, to me, isn't that – he's not as good as Kyle Shanahan or Andy Reid. But I think he's up there in the top five, the top seven offensive play callers in the league. And a lot of people aren't ready to do that yet or give him credit for that yet. But he puts his players in the best spot to win. And the Buffalo Bills, there has been a drop-off in their offense ever since he left, and that's why. Because his play calling was so well-balanced, so good. He knew when to be aggressive. He knew when to step back and run the football. He's a fucking good fucking coach. And I do fear that with the Giants. The Eagles? Yeah, I fear basically two things, the offense, defense, but I fear that receiving core with A.J. Brown and Devonta Smith. That's two future Hall of Famers. I mean, I'm not even afraid to say that already. That They're amazing. Their old line is good. The run game, I think, is going to be really good. They made sure to address that by getting DeAndre Swift. But those receivers are going to make plays no matter what. And then the defense – their whole defense is good, but that defensive line and the rotation that they have, I'm scared of that because no offense can really keep up with them. And I think this year, I mean, with the additions in the draft and everything, they're way better than they were last year on the defensive line, which is scary to even think. But yeah, I, I am afraid of the Eagles. They are, in my opinion, on paper, the best team in the league with what they have to work with. The Washington Commanders are up next. Maybe in time, I could fear the defensive line if I know everyone's going to be healthy and, you know, they end up showing that they can get to the quarterback, stop the run, all of those things. You know, we got to see how Chase Young looks get, coming back from injury last year. But as of right now, I'm not afraid of Washington. Um, I mean, I would say, you know, now that I think about it, their defense is pretty good. But I, again, I don't fear it because their offense is going to be leaving them on the field so much. I think it's going to be a liability regardless. I don't fear Sam Howell. And it's not like the Washington defense, like last year, it's not like they really showed me anything to be fearful of. So I think they do have the talent eventually to scare me, but not right now. The Chicago Bears are up next. And as bad as I think that defense might be, I am afraid of Justin Fields. I really am because he's so explosive. I don't want to say he's like Lamar Jackson, but in a way he is. I mean, he moves around. He can run it like, you know, if he gets break out in the open, left to right, open, and he can go for 60 yards. I mean, he can run it right to the end zone. That's how good he is. And then off play action, now with the weapons that he's got, thankfully they finally brought, you know, players in like DJ Moore. I think Darnell Mooney, he'll compliment him very well. But it's good to see that because now – teams aren't going to be able to just stack the box against the Bears all the time. And even if they do, it's going to be tough for them because Fields can break it to the outside, break containment, then throw it down the field. So, yeah, I, I as bad as the Bears are probably overall their record's going to be, week in and week out, I fear Justin Fields. He's dynamic. I don't know why other people don't give him credit. I, I really don't. The Detroit Lions – yeah, I fear their offensive line because if your D-line isn't on top of their game or you're undersized, you're going to get mauled and there's nothing you're going to be able to do. You won't be able to stop the Detroit Lions offense, even though I don't really fear their receiving group. Okay. Um, Jared Goff, if things aren't going well, I don't fear him. And as of right now, I don't particularly fear the Detroit Lions defense. 
I, I know they got some good young players and everything, but let's see what it looks like fully healthy. I want to see it first. They had a good year last season, but I want to see that carry over everybody be healthy. But I'll be honest, the one thing I do fear about Detroit, again, is the O-line and them just dominating teams and controlling the clock. That's To me, that's one of the biggest things, too, running the football, keeping other teams' offenses off the field. That's what Detroit can do. The Packers, as of right now, offensively, I don't really fear anything from them. But I will be honest, I'm borderline fearful of their defense. Because they're so deep, they got playmakers at every level, they're really tough against the run, they force teams to do things that they don't want to do, which is pass more than they want to, and then that ends up playing right in the Packers' favor, in my opinion. So as of right now, eh, I mean, with the way it's looking, the, the, I know Jordan Love has looked good during preseason, but preseason is just that, it's not overly the end-all, be-all, but yeah. I'll give them credit where it's due. That defense, I think, could carry the Packers this year and allow their offense to grow. The Minnesota Vikings are up next. There's not a goddamn thing that I fear about them at this point. Justin Jefferson's nasty. Uh, I think Addison's going to come along nicely. But all you have to do is stop the pass game from the Vikings and you win. The, the, the whole little dream theory of Delvin Cook coming back, not happening. He's already signed. He's gone. He's all the way in New York now, guys. Well, New Jersey, whatever. Um, So, yeah, Uh, the Vikings defense is completely depleted. They don't have a pass rush outside of Daniil Hunter. Double him. Nothing else is going to happen. I don't think Kirk Cousins is going to be able to go out here without a dominant run game like he had last year with Delvin Cook. So, and we know Madison isn't going to be good. He's going to be good, but he's not going to be like Delvin Cook. And that's what kept them in so many games and opened up things for the receivers. So, uh, you know, Justin Jefferson's not going to dominate a full 17. He's not going to break records. He's not going to break receiving records like Tyreek Hill can do. So this is where we're at. A depleted Vikings team that, in my opinion, is just waiting for the end of the Kirk Cousins era so they can start to rebuild. That's what's up. They don't want to tell you guys that, but that's what's up. Next up, the Atlanta Falcons. Not a word. They're coming along, but there's nothing that I'm afraid of with this team. Nothing. O line's decent. I like what they've added to the receiving group, but the quarterback room is still up in the air. We don't know what's going to happen. And if you don't have a good quarterback, you're not going to be winning. So, uh, like I said, I'm pretty sure at some point we're going to be seeing Taylor Heineke out there as the full-time starter. And we already know how that worked out with Washington. It's not going to get you to the playoffs. It's not going to win you games. It's just going to make your offense stagnant and you're going to be embarrassed some weeks. So even though I like some of the pieces on both sides of the ball, like I really like the way their secondary shaped out this year. Um, they added some okay pieces to the front seven, some good veterans, but this is still a team that's going to be lucky if they get to six, seven wins. So, no, I'm not fearful. The Panthers are up next. In time, maybe I'll fear Bryce Young. But as it stands right now, I don't. He's got a lot of growing. Saw really good flashes from him in the preseason. You saw the mold. You saw the movement. You saw him getting the ball out quickly. You saw the confidence. He's just got to get more used to it. But I'm pretty much sold from what I saw that he eventually will be a very good quarterback. So Panthers fans, rest easy. It might be a year or two, but you're going to have a good team with him at some point. I'm pretty sure about that. But again, as of right now, the receiving core isn't very good. The O-line is still middle of the pack. You know, you got Miles Sanders, who's injury prone running the football. Defensively, outside of the D-line, you're not that scary. Um, And even that's really not that frightening to me. So Yeah, uh, in time, the Panthers could be a good team, but not right now. The New Orleans Saints, they're going to be a good team, but I I don't really fear anything for them. The receiving core is really good, providing they're healthy with Michael Thomas, Olav. I'll give them that. But, yeah, I don't really fear Derek Carr. I I don't fear Jameis Winston. You know, I don't fear their offensive line. I don't fear their defense. So I think they got enough to do what it takes to win this division, which isn't saying much, but when you're talking about the AFC teams and some of these juggernauts, they don't stack up at all to that. 
Tampa Bay Bucks, not a goddamn thing that I'm fearful of of them. O lines broken up, receiving core constantly hurt, average quarterback play, whatever you're going to throw out there, whether it's Baker or Kyle Trask as of right now, unproven run game, linebackers like, you know, Devin White, who don't even want to be there. You know, he, he requested a trade. They talked him out of it. Uh, D line isn't what it used to be. I mean, Vita Vey, uh, that's about it. Shaq Barrett's pretty good, but I don't, I'm not afraid of them. Really. You, I think you could take care of that. Not enough depth to spell them either when they get tired and the secondary is not overly good. So yeah, the bucks, I think they're going to be one of those six win teams at, at best. Um, Arizona Cardinals, there's not one thing about the Cardinals that I fear. If Kyler Murray was in the lineup, I'll be honest, I'm always afraid of Kyler Murray because he's so dynamic. But this year, even if he's in the lineup, Hollywood Brown, I mean, who's really going to help this team out on the offensive side? And defensively is just embarrassing. I can't even believe that they fucked up that shit with Isaiah Simmons. They let him go for peanuts when all you got to do is put this dude at outside linebacker and let him do short zone coverage and then blitz the quarterback. That's all you had to do with Isaiah Simmons. But obviously they didn't want to do that, and he's gone and the team got worse. The Los Angeles Rams, absolutely, I don't fear anything about them. Aaron Donald's really good, but that's all they got. That's all they got. Everything else is depleted, and, you know, you double Donald and – um, hope for the best. You probably end up winning just regardless. But O lines and shambles, run games unproven. Outside of Cooper Cup, their receiving core is just booty cheek. So there you have it. The Seattle Seahawks are up next. I'll be honest. We'll see if Njiba can come back healthy. I think he had wrist surgery this past week. So if he's in the lineup with DK Metcalf, with Tyler Lockett. I actually would be a little bit scared of that receiving core because that, that's pretty dominant. It's pretty damn good. But I'll be honest, I'm not afraid of their O-line. I'm not afraid of Geno Smith in general just because I'm not sold that he's going to continue this success. I, I'm really not sold on it. And defensively, I'm not afraid of anything with them either. But I'm always honest with you guys. You know, I mean, the Seahawks fluttered out as the season went on last year. I don't really think anything's going to change. I think – this whole Geno Smith experiment is going to backfire in their face. But if everyone's healthy, that receiving core could make waves and make it a lot easier for Geno or whoever ends up playing quarterback for them this year as the season goes on. And the last team, which I'm very fearful of, is the 49ers. On the offensive side, I'm extremely afraid of Kyle Shanahan and his play calling. It's amazing. And you know what? Everybody that's Trey Lance, God, no, you can give him a fair shake in San Fran. Well, guess what? If you can't succeed in Kyle Shanahan's offense, I mean, I think I could go out there. If I had a couple weeks of practice, I'm not saying I would play, I could play in the NFL, but I honestly think like I could complete a five or 10 yard pass in his scheme in one regular NFL season game. Just one. I think I could do it just one time at some point. Because it's that good. He has guys running wide open everywhere on the field. And it's immediate. It's like, boom. Like, as soon as they drop back, there's always one guy somewhere that's open most of the time. And for Trey Lance not to succeed or have, a, like, at least some flashes of being good in this scheme shows that he doesn't have the it factor to be a quarterback in the National Football League. You could put him on any team. Maybe. In a year or two, he could develop and change things and, and grow confidence. Not saying it's possible. I'm not saying it's impossible, but from what it stands right now, no. He's not going to get a better chance to succeed, and he's already been in the league a couple of years. He, the 49ers is like a, a haven for a safe haven for any quarterback, and he couldn't make it work. But I'll tell you what, Brock Purdy will. I'm not afraid of Brock Purdy himself. I'm afraid of the play calling and how open guys are going to be, how good that run game is going to be because of Kyle Shanahan. And I'm also afraid of that 49ers defensive line. I really hope they get everything worked out with Nick Bosa so they can come out here and have a really good year like we know they can. But, yeah, I mean, Bosa is an animal. He's a top-five defensive end. He's a guy that can destroy a game, take over, pretty much demoralize you. If you're an offense, he has that ability. So 
guys, that wraps it up. That's all 32. That's where I what I think of them right now heading into the regular season. And I'll probably be on here for another video or two in the coming days. You know, I'm going to keep the page up to date for you guys heading into the regular season. But as of right now, I think that was a good recap. Let me know what you think about what I said. I'll see you soon.